This is the grave of Barney Hughes. Wow. Yep. Go on, you go. So, Barney Hughes was a baker, and people of a certain age of generation Belfast and Outland districts have a wee rhyme, or they know of a little rhyme that goes Barney Hughes' bread sits in your belly like lead. Not a bit of wonder if you fart like thunder on Barney Hughes' bread. Oh <laughs> now, that's not as bad as it sounds. To give a bit of background to Barney, Barney was from just outside Katie in County Armagh. County Armagh is lovely. I've got a place down there. And he came up to Belfast as 14, 15 year old apprentice baker and worked in the with the baker shop in Belfast and whoever he was apprenticed with. And once he finished his apprenticeship and everything else, he decided up I'm gonna go into business for myself. He's an ambitious young man, you know he he he, he, he had his wits about him, he just didn't want to plug for him big bread. He, he wanted to make something of his life. And so he went into business for himself. And he was very, very successful. Very successful. He was the first person to automate the bread making process in Belfast, where it was made on our production line. Yeah. So therefore, all his competitors were still in at three in the morning, flour, water, yeast, you know, more or less making up a hand and small concerns and whatever. He had a factory somewhere near the centre of town originally and then he had another one just up the Spurfield Road. And so he over over three stories he had the administration and the factory and all the distribution all in the one area. So he, he good business brain. And during the period of the famine when Barney was in business, he Part of the what they did to try and relieve some of the uh, problems of the famine was they released a lot of the or they relaxed a lot of the corn laws, which meant that corn could be imported, and so corn and wheat and so on could be imported. So, as I say, Barney, being the man he was, forward thinking, he chartered a boat, sent it out to Canada, got it loaded up for the week brought it back. Cost them what they might be got obviously per unit his costs were very low. Yeah. So with his automated system and everything else, he was able to go and cut all the other bakers and make loads of money. But the other bakers didn't like this. Not one bit. This young upstart from County Armagh come up here with just his Barney a pair of shoes and his feet and look at him now. Didn't like it because Barney saw the opportunities, used the technologies available and went with it. And they think that this little rhyme that I told you at the start about his bread and That's not true. being very good for the digestion and so on came from them to try basically to undercut and rubbish his product. But Barney, being the smart man that he is, put a wee bit of spin on it. He says, yes, it does sit in your belly like lead. He says, in these times when people need food and need to feel as if they're filled up, for my penny, when they buy my bread, they feel like they've had a meal. He says, the reason it fills you up, he says, because I use the best ingredients. It's not full of your and full of this like yours is, where they eat it and five minutes later they don't even know they've had it. So yes, it may sit in their bellies like lead, but they go, go to bed at night with their bellies full and feeling a bit better. Barney Hughes' <laughs> lasting legacy is the Belfast BAP, which we all know and love. And indeed, he was a very charitable man. He gave, uh, if he had excess bread or anything like that, or bread that was going to be possibly thrown out, uh, at the end of the day, he actually loaded it up onto hand carts and took it round uh, the poor people uh, who had nothing and he's well known and respected, remembered for that.